From the beginning, SANS has been a mission-driven organization. We want to make the world a safer place. At SANS, we've always had this focus on empowering cybersecurity professionals with the real-world, practical skills they need. Our courses, certifications, cyber ranges, college, scholarship programs, community resources, they all maintain the highest standards in the cybersecurity training and certification community. And as a teacher, as a mentor, it's so rewarding to have that role in making it happen. You'll get more value from a SANS class than any other training course easily. Hello and welcome back to day three here at the SANS booth um, at RSA uh, Conference 2022. I am Steve Nehart, I'm the Director of Content here at SANS and we are streaming live from our booth uh, at the show. So if you're here in San Francisco and attending RSAC, uh, please come over and say hello. You can find us in booth 3416, 3416. If you're tuning in live, uh, we have had a, a, a global presence over the last three days. And so I invite you to go ahead and click the, uh, uh, scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the comments uh, to look at the schedule of uh, live streams, live broadcasts that we have happening this week. Or um, you, know, you can view the, the schedule of upcoming live streams as well as view some of the streams that we had uh, happening since Monday. Uh, we had Rob Lee, Johannes Ulrich, um, and several others on. And we have a stack day today, uh, the first of five live broadcasts that we're doing today. Um, is happening right now, and I'm joined by Jake Williams, uh, a computer science and InfoSec expert, U.S. Army veteran, uh, a, a, a science personality for many, many years. Jake, welcome, man. Good hey. to see you. That's great to be here, man. Appreciate I think this having me. It's the first time I'm seeing you in person post COVID. Definitely. It's been, a, been a bit, right? Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. How you been? I'm living the dream, man, every living day. Living the dream. I love it. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for this chat. Um, for those of you, for those, you know, tuning in, and, and we're live on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter across our SANS channels, but for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, so currently my day job, I'm the executive director of Cyber Threat Intelligence over at Scythe. And so I'm building out adversary emulation plans. Historically, um, you know, I've run consultancies. I've done a lot of incident response. That's probably what I'm best known for in the commercial space. Um, and then uh, prior to that, spent 18 years in the intelligence community, uh, having all kinds of fun, uh, mostly with offensive operations. Love it, love it, love it, love it. There are a lot of people tuning in. Um, I see hello from London, uh, Glen Rock, New Jersey, Houston, uh, DC, California, love it. Love seeing all the, all the folks. Continue to say hello in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. If you have any questions for Jake through the conversation, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat. Jake, do you have any advice for people who may be looking to get into cyber threat intelligence or even more broadly, cybersecurity? Yeah, look, if you're looking to get into cyber threat intelligence, uh, first and foremost, there's a book from Richard Hoyer um, called The Psychology of Intelligence Analysis. It's dirt cheap, right? like 20 bucks. Go pick the book up on Amazon, you will not be disappointed. It's all about how to think, how to conduct analysis. It actually doesn't touch cyber at all. It was written, I believe, in the 80s. Wow. Um, but uh, it is the go-to book for analysis. Wow, why, why recommend that book? Because all too often, right? We, 
actually, I'll back up a little bit and say that with cyber threat intelligence, right, we, we, and we highlight this in 578, right, but yeah. the, uh, uh, you know, we have so many folks that really want to reinvent the wheel. They're like, no, cyber is different. It's, you know, it's different. It's like, it's not. Intelligence analysis is intelligence analysis. And now we're adding cyber as a, as a layer on top of that, right? So learn how to think and do analysis first yeah. and then add that cyber component in. Wow, I, I love that. Um, can you talk to us about some of your recent contributions to the, the cyber community? I know you did a, a webcast recently yep. on the uh, Felina vulnerability. Ooh, man, that was a, uh, that was a slog, right? Yeah. So uh, I remember, uh, yeah, it was, uh, gosh, was that just a week and change ago? It, it was. was. Oh my yeah. gosh, man. <laughs> Time flies when, uh, wow. Um, so yeah, I remember walking down, uh, walking down stairs Saturday uh, into uh, my office and uh, my dog is all like, woohoo, we're going, it's disc golf day, right? And I see uh, my Threat Intel, one of our Threat Intel channels pop up and like, hey, there's this little thing that's starting to break here a little bit. And mm. the benefit of a bunch of the uh, folks that run in that Threat Intel community in Europe, right? So they're five hours right. ahead right yeah. there, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that ends up consuming my weekend there, uh, reproducing the vulnerability, obviously, and getting proof of concepts together. And, and then also just understanding what we do from a remediation standpoint, because yeah. And it was so clutch, right? Because I actually chatted with our curriculum director, Rob Lee, yes. um, and I said, hey man, I don't know, are you tracking this? He's like, dude, I'm on vacation, right? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like okay. He's like, well, we're setting something up anyway, because we yeah. kind of chat back and forth, and um, you know, we, we recognize this is a long weekend, right? People are gonna, a lot of us are not tied in. You get, you get to take that time off, right? Yeah. yeah, so we're like, folks are gonna walk back in um, on, Tuesday on Tuesday morning into yeah. what I can only refer to as, as a poop show, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're going to be asked, is this a big deal? Can we detect it? What is it, right? right. Um, and so, you know, me and Rob thought about that a bit um, and uh, went back and forth a little bit and set up a live stream for that webcast uh, for 5 p.m. that Tuesday, right? So we got people the information they needed so they could respond, react. They had enough time to digest, you know, at least what they were seeing internally, and then we gave them, you know, the additional... Uh, additional data there. So. Jake, it seems like there's always these, these uh, you know, vulnerabilities that pop up during like holiday periods. Uh, is there some rhyme or reason to that? You know, I, I don't think it's necessarily a rhyme or a reason piece, although for whatever it's worth, this one is, is really interesting. This wasn't a vulnerability that necessarily was like disclosed rolling into a holiday weekend. Um, what ended up happening is threat actors, and this is one of the reasons that we moved to do an immediate emergency webcast on this, Threat actors were exploiting this in the wild. That's how it was found. Ah. And so this security research group out of Japan, right? Who, by the way, they don't they don't celebrate Memorial Day, right? right. Um, so they're you know looking through some of their uh, some of their malicious document submissions, and like this looks really weird. Yeah. And, and sure enough, a couple of other folks looked, and they're like, that is weird. And, and so it's a threat actor exploiting this vulnerability in the wild already. Yeah. We saw how easy it was to weaponize and game on, right? But as you think globally, you think yeah. holiday weekend, yeah. remember everybody's got different holidays. That's absolutely true. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Speaking of global, I mean, I'm looking at the comments. We have people tuning in from Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, I'm seeing Egypt, Brazil, Boston, Slovakia, Chile, Saudi Arabia. We have people from Poland. This is amazing. Lots of people tuning in. Thank you so much for checking us out. Um, Jake, you've also notably been involved in, in creating resources around what's happening in, in Russia and Ukraine mm -hmm. uh, and that crisis. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of the resources you've created? Yeah, so, um, you know, the Russia-Ukraine piece is, is really interesting, right? Um, you know, and, and look, obviously, uh, you know, my heart goes out to all the people impacted by the Russian invasion, uh, Slava Ukraine. Uh, but uh, you know, one of the things that we saw as they, you know, as Russia rolls across the border, even leading up to that, right, with the tensions, uh, we have a lot of folks out there that are really, really worried about, like, oh my gosh, cyber getting, right? And and the reality isn't that. Um, you know, one of the unique perspectives that I can bring because I've been an offensive operator, um, you know, in the past, is is what's that decision process look like on the other side of the keyboard? Right? Because it's very easy when you don't know what's coming to start thinking about like, oh my gosh, like the sky is falling. And then yeah. especially after the invasion, right? There was a lot of worry about, um, you know, are they going to retaliate? Will Russia retaliate for sanctions? And what will that look like? And will that, you know, will we be collateral damage as a result or, or spillover? And and so, you know, it's, I, I find it's, it's very helpful to bring that voice of reason. And, and I say reason, I don't necessarily mean like, 
nothing bad's gonna happen, right? right? But at least to walk people through what does that decision process look like on the other side of the keyboard and bring that perspective to everybody. Mm. So I appreciate that. Well listen, um, if you have any questions for Jake, uh, feel free to drop those in the chat. Um, what have you been up to this week at RSA? Have you seen anything that pops out to you or any, any kind of trends that you're noticing? Ooh, any kind of trends. Yeah. I mean, definitely a few trends here. I'll tell you, I haven't walked the uh, floor as much as I would have liked to. I haven't had a chance to be yeah. stuck here in the booth. <laughs> yeah, well, like, I'm in my site suite that's, you yeah. know, that's off-site, up, uh, up the way there. Um, now, we've had tons of people in and out. Um, you know, I'll tell you, one of the big trends that I'm seeing, at least there, right, is, is concern around, uh, basically, do our security controls work, right? Um, you know, all too often we have folks that just go deploy a security control and they're like, woohoo, now we're safe, right? And, and as an incident responder, I can tell you that's not always the case. In fact, frequently is not the case. Wow. And so, uh, you know, what, what I'm seeing a lot of is, is folks really kind of stepping back and asking the hard questions to vendors this, this time around. Yeah. Um, I didn't see that two years ago, right? What I saw was a lot of like, Okay, I've got to get an EDR check here. You know, I write the check, right? I got to get a, you know, I got to get a DLP. I've got to get, you know, cloud security posture management, right? And 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 now there's a lot more questions being asked around one, uh, you know, from a product standpoint, how do you know it works? And then secondarily, what integrations do you have, right? Nobody wants eight panes of glass. You want to you want to unify that data together. So those are some patterns I've seen definitely. Love it. Anything else you want to add? Ooh. Man, you're giving me like an open yeah. mic? Wow, that's, that's dangerous. Danger, danger Will Robinson, right? Um, so. Julie is saying, can you please write the name that you suggested? The name I suggested? Oh, that's the Psychology of Intelligence Analysis by Richard Toyer. Right? So, Psychology of Intelligence Analysis by Richard Toyer. Um, I, I guess what I would throw out here, uh, you know, if I was going to, um, if I could uh, just, you know, Throw one thing out for folks that are getting into cybersecurity, as well as the folks that have been around a while. Um, you know, one, stay humble, right? Um, two, if you're new, don't have imposter syndrome, man. Nobody knows it all. Like I am I googling think we need stuff to say that left again and right. For the people in the back. Do not have <laughs> imposter syndrome. And and by the way, like true story, right? Um, so I get a uh, you know get get a calendar invite here. It says 12:30. Show up, you know, at this booth number or whatever, and uh, you know. I end up like, this is how ragged I feel like I'm running. I email Steven and I'm like, I was like, hey dude, like I can't meet you then. I'll have to be like 1330. And he's like, cause I was like, because I have a live stream at the Sands booth. He's like, I am your live stream. I'm like, wah, wah, wah. So, you know, but, uh, but no joke, man. Be humble um, because not a, you know, nobody knows it all. Don't get that imposter syndrome. And then be hungry yeah. every day, right? And this, I'll tell you, this is how I stay, stay on top of cyber threat intel. It's how I stay on top of, you know, cybersecurity generally. It's you know, I've got a good feed of you know LinkedIn and definitely on Twitter and, and a couple of other uh, a couple of other places there where I'm seeing article shares and it's just tons of reading. So I, I methodically set aside an hour at the beginning of every day and I don't get through everything yeah. in that hour, but no. it's an hour a day of like constant learning. It's just like going to the gym. Yeah, right? 100%. So anyway, man, thank you so much for having Listen, me, brother. Appreciate great it. having you on. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, once again, I encourage you scan the QR code on the screen or Go ahead and click the link in the comments below. You can see the full schedule of the other live streams we have happening today. We have four more today. We're gonna to be having Katie Nichols here, Karen Evans here, um, Jeff McJunkin. Uh, so tune in, check us out uh, and uh, for today and tomorrow. And thank you so much for watching, appreciate it. From the beginning, SANS has been a mission-driven organization. We want to make the world a safer place. That's one of the reasons why so many incredibly talented, highly respected security experts have wound up teaching here. The instructors you find in the classroom are not only renowned security practitioners, but they also excel in mentoring. At SANS, we've always had this focus on empowering cybersecurity professionals with the real-world, practical skills they need, not just to evolve and grow in their careers, but ultimately develop expertise that's going to help change the world. It's made me more excited about being in cybersecurity uh, just because there is so much going on. And so, you know, getting connected and understanding, you know, just kind of, um, you know, what, what's new and what's out there, um, that's what SANS brings and that's awesome. Our courses, certifications, cyber ranges, 
college, scholarship programs, community resources, they all maintain the highest standards in the cybersecurity training and certification community. At SANS, you're surrounded by a network of cybersecurity experts who help you learn. We want to help you solve a problem and teach you the skills to solve your future problems. And we're really proud of the community we've created, which has practitioners from around the globe coming together to share knowledge, to stay at the cutting edge of adversary tactics and defense techniques. If you're considering taking your first SANS course, just do it. I don't know how else to say it other than just do it. I was super nervous when I took my first. I did not know what to expect. But when you come here, it doesn't matter what level you are from beginner to intermediate to advanced to expert. I'm going to say you're going to pick up on something from either the instructors or the students because the level of expertise and the level of education that you get here, you cannot get anywhere else. SAM students are learning the skills they need to change the world. To make the world a safer place. And as a teacher, as a mentor, it's so rewarding to have that role in making it happen. You'll get more value from a SANS class than any other training course easily.